Hi and welcome, my name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes we're going to take a look at how easy it is to create your own custom web galleries in Lightroom. So I have a collection of images here that I've selected and I'm going to move over to the web module by selecting it in the module picker. You can see here under the layout style that I have a number of different galleries that I can choose from. We have the classic galleries and then we also have this grid gallery. We have a square gallery and a track gallery. And of course all of these different galleries, if we look on the left hand side, they all have a number of different presets that we can choose from. And of course we can preview those by hovering our cursor on top of the different galleries over here. So let's go ahead and start with the track gallery default right here and make some changes to it. Now I want to just mention that I have my panels in what's called solo mode and the way you get to solo mode is just by right mouse clicking on any of the panel layouts and then choosing solo mode. And the great thing about solo mode is that when you're on a laptop or a screen that's small, instead of having multiple panels open at one time, every time I click on a panel header, any other panel that's open will be collapsed. So right now the layout style is open, but when I click site info, layout style closes and site info opens. So it just saves me some time scrolling up and down my panel. So we can go ahead and rename the gallery title here. I'll go ahead and type in Japan. And then if I wanted to, I could type in my name as the author. And for the gallery author URL, I'll type in http colon backslash backslash www.jcost.com. When I tap return or enter, we can see now that it has a hyperlink underneath it. But for now, let's go to our color palette. You can see that we can make changes to the background, the text, as well as icons. We can also change the appearance. For example, I could change the row height here, making it larger or smaller if I want to. We can also change the amount of spacing in between the rows here, and we can choose whether or not we want to show the header. Under image information, if there were titles or captions that we'd added to the metadata of these images, we could go ahead and automatically load them here. I haven't done that, so I'll go ahead and turn that off for now. In the output settings, we get to choose the quality that we want or the amount of compression that we're adding to the large images. We can also choose whether or not we want to add a watermark and how much sharpening we want. Finally, if I want to upload this directly to add this to my website, I can go ahead and enter in all of the settings here. Or if I prefer, I can just export this and it would export it as one single folder with all of the necessary subfolders with all of the images so that I could go ahead and post this anywhere I want. For now, I'm going to go ahead and just select to preview this in the browser so that we can see what it looks like. If I want to preview any of the images larger, I can click on them. And then we can use the navigation at the top in order to click from one image to the next. I'll go ahead and close that. And if I click on my name, we can see that it will link that to my website. All right, let's go ahead and return back to Lightroom. I just want to remind you that if you want to save this as a template, we'll want to do that over here in the template browser by just clicking on the plus icon. Or if I wanted to save this layout as well as all of the photographs that I have associated with it in the film strip, then I would create a saved web gallery. I'll call this Japan Web Gallery. We'll include it inside the Best of Japan. I'll click Create. And if I return back to the grid view, we can see in my collections, there's my Japan Web Gallery. So there you have it, an easy way to create web galleries to share your images with friends and clients in Lightroom. My name is Julianne Koss. Thanks for watching.